Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Maddie, and in this video, I'm going to be covering everything you need to know about references in RemNote. This is going to be kind of a remake video, uh, as I've already dissected references in the past, but with the new UI and interface, there have been a few changes. So I thought I'd just redo it all and show you guys how they work. So I'm going to cover their behavior, what they are, and how you can make them. So what are references? References are rem that are linked within your database. It's that Wikipedia-like aspect of RemNote where you can generate backlinks between your rem and you can see how everything is interconnected together. Next, what can be referenced? Well, anything in a rem can be turned into a reference, whether that's a single word like I did right here, or even an entire block of text, including symbols. Anything that you want to put in a rem can be turned into a reference. The exceptions being images and videos because they're not searchable through your knowledge base. So what's actually happening when you create a reference is that you're making a new document for that rem. It would be the exact same as going into the sidebar, clicking on the new document button, and creating a blank document for that rem and naming it something. That rem will then become a top level rem or a rem without a parent. So now I'm gonna actually go into how you make references in RemNote. I think about making references in kind of two flavors. One, while you're learning and you're actively taking notes, and the second, while you're reviewing those notes. And I'm going to show you what I mean with both of these. So let's say that I'm in physiology class and I'm learning about cardiology. And I come across a sentence that says, the amount of blood pumped by the left ventricle every beat is the stroke volume. So stroke volume seems like a concept that I'm going to probably encounter many times. Uh, it's very important in cardiac physiology. So I'm going to want to make a reference for it or like a Wikipedia page with all this information to like link it together. So to make a reference, I'm going to type in two open brackets and it's going to pull up this blue reference editor with the magnifying glass. Let's type in stroke volume. And since I don't have a rem for stroke volume already, I'm just going to press this button right here to create a new rem. I can also use control plus enter. So click on that, and you'll see that stroke volume becomes blue and clickable, meaning it's been turned into a reference. Left clicking on a reference will open that reference as a page. I'm going to go back to my previous documents. Just so we can better understand the behavior, I'm actually going to open up stroke volume in a second pane so we can kind of compare and contrast what's actually happening to stroke volume. And I'm going to do that by holding shift and left clicking on stroke volume to open it up. So here's the stroke volume reference that we just created. And anytime you make a reference this way by using the two open brackets and selecting create new reference, you're also going to see that that reference is tagged with this thing called stub. The stub tag is automatically added to references that you make this way, so you can kind of keep track of all the references that you've made. And you're more than welcome to just remove that tag if you want. So once you create a reference, that reference will have two search portals, as you can see right here. The top search portal just shows any place that that rem has been referenced. And here we can see that that rem is connected to the stroke volume document. And now I'm continuing in cardiology class and we learned that cardiac output is equal to heart rate times the stroke volume. Now since I've already made reference for stroke volume, I don't have to make a new one. I can just link it to this one I already created. So to do that, go ahead and type the two open brackets again to open up the reference editor with the magnifying glass. I'm gonna type in stroke volume and find the reference that I just created, which is right here. And I can click on that. Now looking back in the stroke volume document, you can see now that there are two references, the cardiac output rem that I just created and the initial stroke volume rem that I created the reference from. And you can continue linking stroke volume as you learn by using the open brackets and finding the existing stroke volume. Now it's important to note that you can create multiple references with the same name. For example, if I type in the two open brackets again and type in stroke, volume. I can either link it to the one I've already made or I can create a new one. Now I would not encourage you to make multiple rem with the same name. It just gets really messy in your knowledge base. But if you accidentally do that, you can definitely merge those rem together just to form one document. Now I'm continuing through cardiology class and I learned that stroke volume is equal to n diastolic volume minus n systolic volume. Now remember that everything in RemNote is a rem, so the stroke volume is also just a rem, which means that I can turn it into a flashcard if I wanted to. So to do that, I can type in the two angle brackets to make it a forwards practice flashcard. And I'm gonna type in n diastolic volume minus n systolic volume. 
And just like a Wikipedia page, I can add information to this document that will be linked throughout my entire knowledge base. So for example, I'll just add some children to this rem. Kids, more kids, 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 kids. Now I'm going to pull up stroke volume here in a portal so that we can see more behavior of this reference. To add a portal, I'm going to use two parentheses and type in stroke volume and bring in the stroke volume rem that we just created. Now if you look to the right of this rem, you're going to see the number three. That three represents all the times that this rem stroke volume has either been referenced or used in a portal. So you can click on it to see that once I use it in a portal in this document right here, and twice more I've used stroke volume and you can see the rem that it's linked to. This is an easy way to take a peek at where this rem was referenced before. Another way to peek at the content of a reference is by right clicking on it. So if I right click on stroke volume here, you can see it pulls up some options for me to modify that rem. And I can also see some of the content, the children to this rem of stroke volume. And you can also see all the places that it was referenced. Now I'm gonna move on to the next way of making references and that's while you review. So in cardiology class again, we learned that cardiac output equals heart rate times stroke volume. And heart rate seems like a concept that's also gonna be very important that I'm gonna to wanna to link throughout my knowledge base. So to do that, I can just highlight over heart rate. I'm gonna type in one open bracket to bring up the reference editor here with the magnifying glass. And since I don't have a reference for heart rate, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new one using control plus enter or clicking right here. Again, I'm gonna open heart rate in a second pane so we can see the behavior that's happening by holding shift and left clicking on heart rate. And remember that it's gonna be tagged with stub since I created a rem that way. You can go ahead and remove that tag if you don't want it. And this time let's take a look at the second search portal in heart rate, the find text references. So what this does is it opens a search throughout your entire knowledge base for any time that you've used the word heart rate. As I expected, I use heart rate many, many times in my knowledge base, at least 54 times. And what I can actually do from opening up this search portal here is that I can make backlinks to heart rate by searching through my entire knowledge base. And I can do that the same way I just created the heart rate reference. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight over heart rate, click one open bracket, and choose the new heart rate document. I'm just gonna do that a couple more times so we can kind of see what happens. So I just linked heart rate three more times. And if I scroll back to the top and I can close this search portal, you'll now see that there are four references that are linked to heart rate. And if I open this up, now you'll see that all the new heart rates that I just linked are shown in this reference. All right, everyone, that's a crash course on everything you need to know about references, how to make them, how to backlink, how to find them. So hopefully that helps you start linking everything in your knowledge base together. We want to make this giant web of information, like a little mini brain. And if you do that enough, you might end up with a knowledge base that looks sort of like mine. So if I go to my med school medicine folder, you can see that I've linked some of these things many times. My cardiology has been linked 35 times. My dermatology has been linked 13 times. Um, I've linked surgery 115 times. You get the idea. A lot of my notes are linked together, just really helping me form a better understanding of all this information.